Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in tonight to Devotions at Seven from Teesside Christian Fellowship. My name is Sandra and I'm a member of the church here in Perth. Well, we're slowly coming out of lockdown and able to resume some, though not all, of what we would call normal activities. But isn't it good to know that we can meet up with family and friends again, especially those that live at a distance? No word yet of when we'll be able to meet together as a church, but we thank God that we've been able to keep in touch and support and encourage one another through the wonders of modern technology. Coronavirus has affected us all in different ways. For some people, it's been a minor irritation, little more than a restriction of movement and social activity. For others, it's been more of a time of adjustment, working from home, waiting in queues to get into the supermarket, homeschooling, childcare, cancellation of holidays or planned events. But for thousands of others, it's been a time of devastation, sorrow, fear and anxiety. Thousands of families are going through bereavement. Many are suffering the physical and mental after-effects of having contracted the virus. Lockdown has strained and broken relationships, and the economic uncertainty has created unemployment, loss of income, financial hardship, spiralling debt. In my immediate family, we fit into all three of these groups. For one, it's just been a minor irritation. For others, it's been a time of adjustment. While for another, it's been a nightmare scenario. First battling the illness, then dealing with the physical and psychological after effects. And now with the additional stress of unemployment and all that entails. For many people, life at this moment in time is tough. They are not looking for advice, but they're longing for identity, hope, security and comfort. C.S. Lewis in his book, The Problem with Pain, says, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our consciences, but shouts in our pains. It's his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. So what is the message that God wants this deaf world to hear. Let's look at it for just a few moments tonight. And if you have a Bible, you might want to turn to Romans chapter 10 and we'll read verses 12 and 13. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Over the past few weeks during lockdown, I've been able to continue as a volunteer with Internet Evangelism, Search for Jesus. And during this time, I've had the privilege of interacting with people from 20 different countries. I'd like to read to you the list of the places that they've come from. The United Kingdom and the United States of America, Australia, Canada, Mexico, Botswana, Tanzania, Nigeria, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Liberia, Mauritius, Papua New Guinea, Namibia, Trinidad and Tobago, South Africa, Zambia, Germany, South Sudan, Ghana, and an unidentified Middle Eastern country. Now, I give you that list to show you that they come from countries that we would consider to be the rich countries of the Western world and those that we would call third world countries. The folks that have contacted the website have come from different ethnic backgrounds. There's been white, black, Latino, Middle Eastern, and an Aborigine from Australia. 
Their questions have been different, but the answer is the same. Jesus. A relationship with Jesus is the fundamental answer to every human need. We need him as our saviour. We need him as our guide. We need him as our counsellor and we need him as our comforter. We need him as an advocate. And it's through him that we can have peace with God. We can be reconciled to God. When you have Christ, you have all that you need. And that's what God's promised here. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. No matter where you live. No matter your ethnic background. No matter your problem. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now I'm aware as I speak that there may be one who's listening who's asking, well, saved from what? What are you talking about? Let me explain. The Bible, which is the word of God, tells us this. There is no one who does what is right, not even one. Can I repeat that? There is no one who does what is right, not even one. It makes no attempt to cover up the depravity of men and women. The Bible calls it sin. And it shows us the holiness of God. And the two are not compatible. So on the surface it looks like a pretty hopeless situation. Depraved men and women, a holy God. And it would be a hopeless situation if God hadn't intervened and sent us Jesus. Because sin comes with consequences that are punishable, Jesus offered himself as a substitute in the sinner's place. He took the punishment and judgment that we rightly deserve by dying in our place on the cross, the innocent for the guilty. He took the full force of God's justice on himself so that forgiveness and pardon might be available to us. The Bible tells us that God put the wrong on him, on Jesus who never did anything wrong, so that we could be put right with God. God accepted Jesus' death as payment in full for our sins, so his holiness was not compromised while judgment was passed on sin. But it didn't there end there in the place of hopelessness and death. For God then raised Jesus from the dead to show us that his intention has always been to give us a hope and a future. God can now remove guilt and shame, failure, fear, sin from our lives, and instead we can know forgiveness, peace, joy, hope, and the certainty of heaven. Jesus said, I came so that they can have real and eternal life, a better life than they ever dreamed of. But although it's offered to all, it's only received by those who turn to Christ in repentance. That means turning away from the things that you know to be wrong. And you ask in faith for forgiveness and commit your life to Christ. And by the help of his spirit, go on to live the way he always intended. So that's what it means to call on the Lord. And all who do that will be saved, saved from the judgment of God. If you need help with this or want to know more, contact our website and we'll assist you in any way we can. That's the message that God wants a deaf world to hear. So the next question then was, how will they hear? So let's read the next two verses in Romans. Romans 10, 14 and 15. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring 
good news. So primarily people will hear by word of mouth. Someone will tell them. And if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, a Christian, then you have been given the unique privilege of pointing men and women to the Saviour that they need. They need to hear the gospel. And we can encourage friends, neighbours, gospel, sorry, friends, neighbours and colleagues to have an encounter with Jesus, to understand who he is, what he's done, how to come to faith in him and how to live as his follower. Now, there may be someone who's listening and saying, oh, that's not for me, I could never do that. Can I respectfully suggest, meditate much on Christ. Meditate on what Christ has done for you, what he's doing in your life, how he comforts you, how he guides you, how he forgives you, how he sustains you, how he strengthens you. Think much on what Christ is doing for you. And you know, it'll change how you think. It'll refresh you. It'll give you a heart of gratitude. You'll have hope. You'll have peace. And when you have these things, it overflows into your conversation. So if you want to know how to speak about Christ, meditate on Christ. There's no substitute for it. And you could pray. Pray and ask God to open, to open your eyes to see the opportunities and to give you the courage to take them. Uh, when I was a teenager, just, just recently, a long time ago as a teenager, I used to sing a little chorus and the words were these. Lead me to some soul today. Teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost in sin and cannot find their way. Few there are who seem to care. Few there be who pray. But melt my heart. Fill my life. Give me one soul today. The Bible tells us, He that winneth souls is wise. And finally, persevere and don't be discouraged if you see little or no results. God has called us to faithfulness, but he is in charge of the fruitfulness. Shall we pray? Sovereign God, and yet we thank you that we can call you our loving Heavenly Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for constant forgiveness that we find in Jesus Christ. Thank you for inviting us to play a small part in your sovereign work of reaching men and women with the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give us willing hearts, Lord, to be a worker with you in this wonderful work. So we commit ourselves to you for tonight and for the days that lie ahead and ask your blessing to be upon each one of us and those that we love. And we ask this in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So thanks folks for, again for uh, joining with us tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening and go with God. Honour him and may he richly bless you in the days and weeks that lie ahead. Good night. <laughs>